Welcome to Revolutionary War Rarities, the podcast of the Sons of the American Revolution. Like, follow, and subscribe to our podcast in your favorite application. You can also follow our podcast at fastfunhistory.com. For education resources provided by the National Society, Sons of the American Revolution, go to education.sar.org. And now, Revolutionary War Rarities. Plunkett Fleeson, Season 2 of Revolutionary War Rarities. Hi, my name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Jim Maples. We thank you for being here with us today for another episode of Revolutionary War Rarities, the podcast from the Sons of the American Revolution. Uh, Today we're going to be talking about someone that very few people have ever heard of, but before we get there... I always want to give credit and thanks to the people that are allowing us to shoot these episodes, and that is the American Village located in Montevallo, Alabama. That's just south of Birmingham. Uh, You can find out more information on the American Village by going to their website at www.americanvillage.org. Wonderful place. Wonderful place to learn about American history. And we're yes, thankful for letting for them letting us be here today and filming inside a full-scale replica of the Oval Office. This is our fireside fireside chat. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is our there's no fire, but there's yeah. but all right. So now here's a name that I bet you have never heard. The name is Plunkett Fleeson. In all of my studies of the American Revolution, to my recollection, this name has never surfaced. Yeah. Except obviously lately. Uh, But it turns out that Plunkett Fleeson was a well-known individual in Philadelphia, someone that was very well off and was considered a craftsman of the highest standard and also played a role in the American Revolution. Jim, that's correct. Plunkett Fleeson was an upholsterer. He was just a little younger than Ben Franklin. So by the time of the French and Indian War and the American Revolution occurred, He was established within Philadelphia and was well known indeed. So by the 1760s and early 1770s, Plunkett Fleeson was considered the premier upholsterer Mm -hmm. and supplier of British interior design goods, certainly within Philadelphia, but around the colonies as well. His work was comparable to any of the finest upholsterers of Europe. Strangely enough, according to the American Revolution Institute, this was a time when the colonists were becoming more British in their fashion, uh, in their dress, their gardening, their architecture, even their interior design, not less British. They were becoming more British. Now, as a merchant of furniture, upholstery, and interior design, and as a very successful one at that, the Stamp Act would have little financial impact on a gentleman of Plunkett Fleeson's financial standing. Yeah. However, Fleeson was fundamentally opposed to the Stamp Act, and he did not hide his feelings from anyone. He was a well-known signer of various tradesmen on a remonstrance against the yeah. Stamp Act. And just for clarification purposes, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines remonstrance as an earnest presentation of reasons for opposition or grievance especially. A document formally stating such points. That is what a remonstrance is. Okay. So the supplier of the finest upholstered furniture and wallpaper in the colonies was not shy about letting the British know of the negative impact yeah. they were having on the colonies. He knew that, the, that, he knew that trade with the British was good economically for Absolutely. the colonies, for Britain, and was certainly good for him. Yeah. And these series of taxes were not going to be taken lightly. Uh, and they were not going to have the effect that the British had hoped. In fact, he had a good idea of the fight that was heading their way. So Jim, Fleeson's products were considered just as high quality as the best offerings available from Britain. Many other artisans supplied other products just as good as the best available in London. 
But now the British were telling all colonists that they were socially and intellectually inferior and did not have and should not expect the same rights as Englishmen. To say the least, Fleeson and others took offense to, to that as they had spent their lives perfecting their craft and they knew that the products they offered were absolutely as good as anything that could be purchased in Britain. And they all considered themselves to be British anyway. So this was an incredible insult and it was taken as such. Well, you guessed it, Fleeson became part of the initial protest, then the resistance, and then yeah. the rebellion. George Washington paid Fleeson a visit in Philadelphia and Fleeson became a supplier of flags and drums to the militia. And one of Fleeson's flags survives to this day. Now, in 1776, Plunkett Fleeson was 64 years old, meaning he was too old to fight in the military, but he could provide some unique supplies. Well, Jim, ultimately that is exactly what Fleeson did in 1776 when he provided the Colonials with a series of three tents. These tents served for the duration of the Revolutionary War and went everywhere that George Washington went. And today one of these tents continues to exist and can be seen at the Museum of the American Revolution in Philadelphia. These tents were used to plan the battles of the revolution. These tents were used to protect our founding fathers from the elements as they put their lives online. This is where they lived, where they ate, and where they met for most of the revolution. And the primary occupier of one of these tents was none other than George Washington. So when you see the George Washington tent in Philadelphia, you see the handiwork of Plunkett Fleeson, the artisan, the tradesman, the upholsterer, and the revolutionary. And ultimately you see the, that great things can happen in small and unassuming places. A tent, not a palace. Absolutely. Jim Abraham Lincoln is quoted as saying, I pass my life in preventing the storm from blowing down the tent, and I drive the pegs as fast as they are pulled up. Well, Plunkett Fleeson, built that tent and George Washington and his troops were tasked with controlling the storm, the battles, the guns, and the enemy from blowing down that tent. Many people now refer to that remaining George Washington tent as the first Oval Office. Kind of unique that we should shoot this yeah, in the Oval Office. Absolutely. And now you know the story of the man who created it, Plunkett Fleeson. And that, my friends, is a Revolutionary War rarity. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Jim Maples. And we thank you for joining us today. And please be sure to join us for the next episode of Revolutionary War Rarities. This has been a production of the National Society, Sons of the American Revolution, www.sar.org.